Okay. All right. Well, happy Friday. Are you looking forward to this three day weekend? Yes. You going to fish? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, it's been a few days short of three months since we sat down last time. Mm -hmm. So give us a status update, uh, specifically at the new assembly factory. Uh, there's been a few pictures leaked and teased, but uh, I understand bike shipments are moving. Can I give us an ETA for when those are actually going to arrive? I would not say that uh, things are going smoothly, but they're going. And uh, so we assembled uh, uh, the first uh, motorcycle on uh, new assembly line on July 23rd. So during the month of August, we made uh, five shipments. So we send uh, two containers to here, to the United States. We ship container to Japan, Australia, and uh, to our uh, distributor in the uh, Czech Republic, and who is serving uh, Great Britain, Ireland, and some Southern European countries. All their assembly shop have been twice as fast as we are now. But, but we're back to operation. That's probably the most important thing. The people that did come over to the new assembly factory, and then there's a couple new hires I heard. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's just the um, reduction in force or the unfamiliarity with the with the assembling the bikes? Mm, r rather the latter, yes. Uh, it's it's all new and uh, even for workers who have been doing these things all their lives, it's still new location, new fixtures. Things aren't in the same things, place. Things are not uh, the same and it will take some time to learn new ways. We are full operational and uh, it will probably take I don't know, two, three months, and um, we should catch up as far as uh, efficiency at uh, new assembly. And these bikes coming uh, that have already shipped and the ones that will be shipping to Austria, they're all going to be 2022? Y yes, we, we, we're building uh, 2022 bikes, uh, and uh, sep September production also going to be 2022. In October, we will start assembling uh, 2023. So the last of the 2022s is an effort to use up some of the inventory that we had it's already a com purchased. It's a, combi it's a combination. So first, uh, yes, we uh, since we have not been operational for six months, we have a pretty large uh, inventory of uh, parts for 2022, which we need to use. Uh, another, another factor is that uh, since we put our suppliers on hold mm -hmm. during this month, they're a bit late with deliveries of uh, of the new 20 of new 20, 23 parts yes. okay we're expecting them uh, shipping it this month and uh, they should be in Kazakhstan by early October and uh, there are a lot of uh, things which are going in uh, uh, in parallel because uh, as you can imagine the smooth it's not like you turn the switch and uh, the old factory stopped doing something new factory started doing something it's a process uh, so we, we keep adding uh, assemblies that uh, put together in Kazakhstan instead of the factory. I was actually going to ask about that. So mm -hmm. this is basically this new way of working, the relationship, how are things are working with the new assembly plant and the old uh, manufacturing plant. How, how's that working between the two facilities? You got independent managers now, or is the <laughs> it's quite uh, quite uh, complicated uh, relationships. So what I'm noticing is that uh, the assembly in Kazakhstan uh, starts uh, feeling itself as more kind of independent yeah. from the factory in orbit, and I see some tensions coming up, which I think are good. Uh, yeah. development uh, because as we talked in one of the previous videos that uh, uh, when we were under the same roof the manufacturing and assembly there were a lot of things which were going Hidden. on on the floor level which we would not know yeah now all these issues are com coming up and becoming more obvious and i think it's uh, it's it's good development which would uh, lead to uh, manufacturing part of the 
company pushing them to take more responsibility for the uh, say splitting it into two entities now you basically have an accountability level that's being applied which we, to, which we have not uh, had uh, yeah before there's still this I would have to say a little bit of uh, indignant controversy any entity whether it's us or anybody else doing business in or with Russia um, you're paying taxes you're paying employees which is viewed as feeding the system. I just want to get your thoughts on that one final time and then we can put it to rest. We still have a strong level of support from our customers. There was a few out there that were like, I'm going to sell my bike. And then now that's trail, trailed off a little bit to people that are like, I'm never going to buy a product. What do you see our position there? Okay. The, the first thing I want to say is that uh, as long as you employ people, no matter where, you pay taxes. So as long as we have people working in the factory in Russia, we're going to be paying uh, taxes. I mean, if uh, some people don't like it, I, I can't help. It's going to be like this, at least uh, for some time. If, if some people are looking for purity, they're going to run into problems. If, if you fly somewhere using Boeing or Airbuses, yeah. You should remember that the Russian titanium used in those planes. In those planes. Uh, if you buy any European product, BMW motorcycles. Uh, I'm sure BMW uses some electricity to build the motorcycles. How Germany produces this electricity? They pr produce it using uh, natural gas from Russia or from Russia and all the they're going to implement uh, embargo on uh, Russian oil. They're still using it. <laughs> things like this. You, you don't like China, then just uh, you're going to walk naked. Uh, we're living in 21st century. Everything is uh, very interrelated. And uh, I don't think it's in the interest of uh, humanity to break all, all uh, connections. It's it just... Uh, I don't believe it's feasible. Not today's world, or at least uh, it, it will take some time, even, even, even if uh, we want to. If somebody having problems with us utilizing components built in uh, Russia, then can finally respect their feelings and uh, they will have to stop using our product or not, not buy it in the future. But there is a totally different story on what we're going to do with the factory in Irbit. What I can tell you at this point is that uh, right now we are focused on uh, kind of setting up uh, processes. We, we need to get back to stable uh, operation. The right. bike's been built and shipped. That's, that's the focus. I expect that, as I said earlier, it will take us maybe three, four more months for this transition to be completed and the operations becomes more or less smooth. Then we will look at the situation again, because there are certain risks which we need to think about uh, and uh, decide uh, what we're going to do about it. We went from pandemic supply issues globally for everybody, not just us, but lead times getting longer, uh, raw material uh, prices increasing. Now add to that our <coughs> geographical location um, uh, you'll assume an additional level of expense relocating the factory. So how do you see this affecting Ural's price on bikes, spare parts? So it's obvious that the prices for Ural product, uh, products will go up. And for some markets, uh, they will go up uh, very significant. Another factor, which is very important for us, is the exchange rates. So basically, we have three factors which are pushing our uh, prices up. First is uh, like overall general inflation that we all see and feel. Uh, everything getting more expensive, transportation is getting more expensive, uh, components are getting more expensive. This, this, is, right. this is all around us. So everybody knows about this. That's one thing. Another thing is that, yes, we added another facility. Right. We, uh, and we didn't budget for it. Yeah, yeah we didn't <laughs> budget, we didn't plan. Uh, it's not like we are replacing one assembly facility with another. No, yeah, we, we, are, we are renting new space. We are hiring uh, 
uh, new people uh, who fill the office. Uh, we add the transportation costs from one factory to another factory, things like this. It's not a huge amount, but there is still uh, extra costs which we didn't have and that we need to recover. And factor number three is exchange rates, uh, which is kind of a huge issue for us. Also, we are a very small company, but we are <laughs> a very glo global company. Uh, we're dealing with euros, yens, uh, US dollars rubles, British pounds, probably something else, which I don't remember. Biggest factor for us is that the uh, ruble became very strong against dollar and all other currencies became cheaper against US dollar. This is why Russian-made components, they became more expensive for us. And then to recoup cost and uh, make profit, we need to increase our prices on the markets where local currency got weaker against dollar because the majority of our costs are nominated in dollars. So for instance, in, uh, in Europe, Euro uh, is 15% uh, uh, cheaper to dollar, uh, Japanese Yen, uh, lost uh, almost a quarter of its value. Of course, we will need to compensate for this by increasing our prices for these markets. We don't have tools to uh, hedge against these risks, so we will have to pass it on, on the customers, unfortunately. Prices in uh, US dollars will go up and uh, uh, prices in uh, euros or pounds or yens will go up even more significantly. I guess sitting here at this moment then with everything that has happened globally and the, the way the motorcycle industry is, I guess you could say evolving, you're seeing introduction of more electric bikes. Um, you're seeing new technologies taking over as far as enthusiasm from the retail public. Right now, we're just trying to get back on a level playing field with what we had at the beginning of 2022. Where do you see us say in three years? It's a, it's a good question. <laughs> I don't know if I can give you a good answer. First, because of uh, COVID and now this uh, uh, war uh, in Ukraine, uh, we pretty much uh, have not been investing in research and development. R&D. Majority of our developing projects uh, on whole, except some things related mostly to outsourcing. But maybe this uh, two-year pause is a good thing because, uh, as you said, the environment is changing pretty dynamically. Uh, we are finding ourselves with pretty good indication that uh, maybe not in three years from now, but uh, in 10 years from now, we might not be able to sell our product if it's still equipped with uh, internal combustion engines, specifically in markets such as uh, Europe or Great Britain, and maybe even here in certain states. Uh, it's pressing us to put a really serious thoughts on uh, what the direction we have to take as far as development of uh, new products. And obviously electric uh, is something that we need to seriously consider. And as you know, we, we, you drove it, <laughs> uh, we, we, we build a prototype, uh, maybe not even prototype, we, we build a proof of concept. Yes, it was more like proof of concept. We know what uh, can be, what it can do. We know what advantages it brings in terms of potential for involving more people into Euralink specifically people with uh, less uh, uh, motorcycle experience or maybe even without motorcycle experience, like yours tr uh, truly. Yeah, because you, uh, you wrote it. It's in my house. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we will uh, look at it very close. When uh, we'll start breathing again, <laughs> and maybe it will push us to seriously reconsider our product strategy. But uh, not now. <laughs> if we're all going to do this, it's going to be the only project we will be working. And we need to structure this project in a way so it uh, negate the challenges and risks. As it turned out, uh, everything we did in uh, with uh, outsourcing, uh, moving uh, machine parts to suppliers that located outside of Russia, on one hand, it helped us to 
actually continue our operations. On the other hand, it also creates risks. Because if you, if you read the news or watch TV, you <laughs> obviously cannot uh, stop thinking, oh, how safe is to have suppliers in Taiwan? Is it? I think it is. You never know. You never know, <laughs> yes. The fact that you went fishing means that you're a little bit more relaxed. So. <laughs> maybe, maybe fishing is my stress, stress reliever. Stress reliever yeah. Yeah. Um, look, um, I mean, it just. I, th I think we, I think we are doing okay. As I say, it doesn't feel as gloomy as it did it, 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 three months ago. No, it, of course it's not gloomy. The the most important thing that bikes and parts are coming. We're a little behind, but uh, the production schedule, I know what, uh, what we're going to build next. Parts are coming to the factory and uh, more and more uh, looking at the like, uh, normal, <laughs> normal operational business. Also, six months ago, it looked like an extremely crazy idea to, to send guys to Kazakhstan and, and like to find a place to right. land <laughs> we did it what what i should say is that uh, people who been actually doing this they, they are they're heroes yeah like absolute heroes they, like 99 percent of the uh, work has been done by uh, factory guys who are working 24 7 uh, in kazakhstan uh, living there without seeing their families for several weeks in a row who are covering huge distances uh, back and forth on their own cars going through borders and uh, roads which are not always smooth of course we are uh, talking daily and some talking by video conferencing and they always show me something uh, what they did to uh, assembly shop so it looks um, more and more and more like a professional assembly shop and what i feel a drive to make it uh, better than it was in Irbit, which i really uh, like to see and hear and uh, well, I, even I feel this uh, level of uh, pride uh, pride and enthusiasm yeah. which is coming from kazakhstan which is a very very good thing we, and which makes me I mean, confident I, uh, more than anything else, really. So I appreciate your time, but is there anything else in closing that you'd like to add? Just uh, wanted to thank again all our supporters, customers, or future customers, and uh, uh, I invite them to dealerships around the country and around the globe later this month to look at uh, Kazakhstan uh, made Ural. I hope, I hope they will like it. <laughs> All right. Well, until next time. All right. Thank you. Thank you.